Chris dropped a link to our Figma, which if you were in here yesterday with Paul from Antioch in his session on place-based education, that may or may not have been the first time you used Figma. It's a tool that Chris and I have used in our in-person professional development, our virtual PD in particular. And I don't know, it's just a great kind of unflattened flipped tool that you can use to um, get audience interaction, to showcase information that people can go through at their own pace. They don't have to wait for you to go to the next slide. Um, they can take in that information as they go, um, offer their feedback, et cetera. We'll use a little bit of that, but today is primarily going to be um, for us to be able to talk to you a little bit about what this program is, get you actually on the website, using the tools, messing around with it, give you time to um, ask us questions about it. And then uh, we actually have kind of a cool opportunity to for you to potentially get involved in designing more of these lessons um, with us in phase two of this program. So that's kind of how we'll chunk this out, a third of about um, what it is that we're doing, another third kind of showcasing it, and then the last third perhaps I'm um, going through it. So yeah, we'll talk a little bit about who we are, what's our IDS curriculum, how you can use it, and then how you can get involved. So um, I think most people in here probably know who Chris and I are, but but my name is Nick. Um, I'm the creative director. I live here in Iowa. I taught social studies um, for 10 years before jumping into HRP full-time. And Chris? And I'm Chris. Uh, I used to teach, teach digital design and social studies. I'm the executive director. And heads up, I did have the follow feature on that if you don't want to like manually move around the Figma for this part. If you click on the little C in the upper right, or maybe in the middle of your screen, um, you can just follow me. Otherwise, you can move around with either middle mouse or the little hand tool at the bottom. That's a good call. We didn't onboard people with the tools, but um, yeah. So uh, so, that, so that's who we are. Um, and just real quick, if you're not sure what we are about, uh, we really put these four things at the center of the work that we do. So we believe first that learning is rooted in purpose finding and community relevance. So that means creating cross-disciplinary multi-age classrooms, promoting literacy and those other values that you see, that social justice is the cornerstone to educational success. So of course, that means utilizing restorative practices, demanding anti-racist inclusive spaces, we believe that dehumanizing practices don't belong in school. So that is um, redefining and reevaluating assessment um, and evaluation, reducing homework and the like. And then of course, that learners are respectful toward each other's innate human worth. So that's of course, a, a cent centralizing uh, mental health and social emotional learning, ensuring a thriving public education and some of those other things that you see here that we can use to restore humanity to education. And we do that by um, three parts. So informing, a lot of you have um, listened to our podcast, given us feedback on there. Some of you in here may even have been guests on there uh, because we love to talk about the incredible work that you're doing. You may have contributed or read writing on our writing page. And if you haven't and you want to, you can certainly reach out to us with, uh, with um, uh, proposals for that as well. And then we also host a research database because, of course, progressive education is research-based uh, practice, research-based education. And, uh, and there, we guide educators in that too by offering a number of open education resources uh, that you can use in part or in whole. You can remix them, they're creative commons, um, and uh, yeah, use them for whatever uh, purposes you want to in your classroom and in your own, you know, um, uh, uh, teacher-led PD in your own context there too. We also have a YouTube channel where we try to, you know, grow our audience beyond uh, just educators who might click through on our resources, um, expand the conversation into young people as well. And we've also had our edgy futurism learning series where, you know, we try to also expand uh, our imagination of what education is or could be about. So between all of that, there's enough uh, <laughs> content materials uh, for people to spend um, uh, weeks on there. And many of you I know have. Uh, and of course, we grow a movement toward education by hosting events like this, like the one that you can see here, our, our in-person conference we co-hosted with Holistic Think Tank in Columbus, Ohio this last spring. Um, and of course, then through our our, our Discord channel, which is always there for us to continue the conversation even after this conference is over. And there are a number of ways for you to get involved um, with us there too. So yeah, any way that you can get involved to inform, guide, grow a movement toward pro progressive human-centered education is uh, is why we're here. So Chris, what's our vision of the IDS? What is sure. That? So 
Um, if you joined us yesterday or two days ago, actually, you might have seen the session from Holistic Think Tank, which talks about this idea of an interdisciplinary curriculum. And the goal of our organization and those that we're working with is not simply to talk about theory, but also talk about praxis and give tools to educators to actually do this stuff. Um, and a point that we make is that all of it should be available for free. Um, so the interdisciplinary curriculum is a free resource for teachers um, that you can adapt and utilize in your classrooms. Uh, and I'm just going to kind of give you a brief summary of what this is and then give you a link to actually play around with it because the draft version is already out. Um, so the idea is that this interdisciplinary curriculum gives students the ability to look at complex problems in the world and to look at themselves as learners and to build upon that. Um, as we've been talking about a lot over the course of this conference, uh, school engagement is dropping over time, specifically in middle school. It's also a moment where we see uh, lower social emotional health. It's a point where we see less connection with peers and adults. Um, middle school in general is kind of a rough time. Um, and the interdisciplinary curriculum is designed to particularly target that age group. If you teach elementary or high school, you could certainly use this stuff um, and it would probably work with little adaptation, especially in high school. Um, but we knew from like a, if you want to call it like a reading level or something of that nature, um, it's aimed at middle school. Um, and we had said this in our opening session, but we're viewing this through two different lenses. The interdisciplinary curriculum looks at both the idea of wonder, as in looking at really interesting concepts in the world, like the concept of infinity, the concept of scale, the history of mathematics. There's a lot of just random stuff in there, but also the idea of community action, because we need creative, engaged learners to face the various threats of the world and to build a better world together. The interdisciplinary curriculum from HRP alone offers 41 lessons. Each of those has a student guide and a facilitator guide um, with like basically the answers or like discussion ideas. Um, it's 629 pages long. It's a beast in terms of content. Um, it contains a pedagogical guide on how you go about implementing it, as well as an impact guide, which is taking all of these lessons and doing projects with them over the course of multiple weeks. We've also given project starter ideas for every single lesson. I'll show you an example here in a minute, but every lesson dives into how you could incorporate this in each of the like core subject area courses, as well as art and phys ed, um, and just different project branching ideas that would be interdisciplinary in scope. Um, so these lessons are designed that you could incorporate them within an individual class if you need to, but in a perfect world, it would be either a separate period or a way that you can combine with other educators and teach it together. Because at its core, it is tackling every single subject all at once. Um, in terms of what that looks like, again, we have this pedagogical guide that kind of frames the whole thing. We have what we're calling action lessons that inspire wondering community action, which you'll be seeing here in a second. That hopefully will inspire some teachers who maybe um, I mean, they could be folks at this conference, but I'm going to guess a lot of them would be folks maybe who are down the hall that are a little skeptical of trying something new. Well, here's a resource to get started. And then you take those ideas and incorporate them into project based learning and doing something that's hands on multifaceted and extended. I'm going to jump way over here to the left. We designed the curriculum with three principles in mind. The first is that the entire thing is modular in the sense that I am sure that everyone who has used a curriculum as a teacher has picked and chose which things they actually are going to teach and then modified everything else. Uh, rarely we do just kind of like take it and do the script. Uh, so it's divided up into subsections, knowing that folks will pick and choose what parts they want. It is also progressive in nature, which we're loosely defining underneath these seven concepts um, and embraces a universal design for learning. Um, it was reviewed by a UDL uh, specialist. Um, who focused on like anti-racism, disability activism, and things of that nature. Uh, it focuses obviously on experiential learning and PBL because that's what it builds into, um, about sharing power with students and giving them the tools to navigate their own learning. It's cross-disciplinary in nature. Um, you could incorporate it into any subject area class and probably make it work. Uh, it's multimodal. A lot of it is not just reading. We incorporated videos. Um, there are to my knowledge, Nick, I don't think there's any slideshows. They're all pretty much hands-on activities. There's a couple that are a little bit more intense that involve some reading, uh, like reading discussions and things like that. But most of them are like drawing things, making things, moving around the room, that kind of stuff. Um, 
self-determined in the sense that kids are again guiding their own learning and finally uh, we have an assessment system in there that if you use it is all about the idea of reflective thinking and kind of gauging what you understand nick did you want to jump in yeah i was just going to add to that too since the curriculum itself is is uh, open-ended um you know is a, an, an open education resource the links within it as well link to uh primarily free uh, accessible resources too now there may be regional you know um depending on where you're uh, accessing it from around the world um, but we tried as much as possible um, within there to access um, virtual resources and those kinds of things that are just freely available on the internet. Um, some of the recommendations might be for book studies and some of those, but nothing in the curriculum, in the primary curriculum materials is going to require you to buy a class set of anything or even print things out unless you you have the ability to do so and want to. So that was at the forefront of this too. Right. I should also add that because this was prepared in conjunction with Holistic Think Tank, which is a Polish-based organization, the curriculum is kind of worldly in scope. They're not aligned necessarily to U.S. standards explicitly, but they would align to U.S. standards because there's no way we could write the standards for every single state, if that makes sense. Um, and as a result, there's a lot of like worldly perspectives um, throughout. We did use the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, as our model for how to implement the different lessons that kind of guide our work. Um, the final facet is that it's extendable. This is a screenshot here of the last page of every single lesson and the 41 lessons. And you can see each one contains three take it further activities, which are like ideas for projects. Um, I believe this is a lesson that's about like disability access uh, to spaces. So like recognizing when, like when areas are designed for everyone to be welcomed versus communities that maybe are designed against that or are missing out. Um, so for example, one of the projects deals with um, like designing for disability, learning disability, what does that look like, etc. Um, there's three media links. These would be embeddable. Like if you were actually on the lesson, you could click on these, they go to articles and YouTube stuff. And then finally, um, and I think this is the coolest part, uh, there's extension activity ideas for every single core subject area. And we tried to make these actually interesting. As we know, teachers will design a wicked lesson. And we are just trying to think to ourselves, what would be the starting point? Like, what would be the few sentences that could inspire someone to take this thing even further in their class? Um, and you can see like two examples here in language arts. Maybe you're talking about the idea of does listening to an audiobook count as reading? And you could take that into a class discussion. You could listen to an audiobook. You could look at the research behind it. It would be fascinating. Um, or in, nar in art, and for some reason, Nick Susanis has been coming up a lot recently. We were talking about him a lot yesterday, too. Um, Nick Susanis has this whole thing about blind accessible comics and the importance of having like alt text on concepts um, and like super descriptive alt text. And you could get into like what that means as a designer, as an artist, et cetera. Um, so, real quick, quick yeah. Chris. Um, yep. So the cool part is that you can just do the lesson just straight up out of the box to say, hey, I'm just going to do this lesson with my advisory class because I see them once a week. And this is a cool thing to do that just isn't us sitting around checking Google Classroom or something, right? Like kind of I, I think about what what kids did in my advisory. Um, or this could be the focus of, you know, some uh, a team level work that you do to say, well, we'll make the primary lesson uh, uh, the, the focus of all of our classrooms, but then we can break out into our disciplinary focus and say, hey, what is this going to look like in math? How do we extend this, you know, into into that disciplinary space? What does this look like going to be look like in science or social studies, PE, art, all of those kinds of things, too. So um, the idea is, again, take it in whole or take it in part. Um, mix and match, use the tools that are going to um, be the most uh, interesting, useful, sure. successful for you in your individual context. And jumping over to Natasha's question in the, the chat, which is, um, are the extensions all discussion based? And um, they're all starters. So certainly a lot of them are going to be like discussions or readings or like spots that you could get started in thinking about these things. Um, but at times they will dive into like actual activity starters, for example, um, the social studies part actually has that link to uh, exploring your cultural iceberg, which is a really interesting activity um, to get started. Or the phys ed one here is actually creating an action plan um, on universal design and physical spaces. Um, some of these also, in terms of this media section, have actual tools as opposed to articles or YouTube videos. Um, the lessons themselves, which is like the bottom half of this presentation, are like the actual activities, like the spots where it's just like the, the full 
um, lesson. This is just at the end. Um, kind of with that said, here are examples of four lessons that you could find on our website right now um, of different action lesson examples. And again, all framed around two ideas, either wonder or community action or both. Um, so interesting things, things you could do in your community and a combination of the two. Uh, there's a whole lesson on sound design, which again, this is interdisciplinary. That's math, that's science, that's English, that's, uh, that's uh, social studies. Um, getting into like what determines what sounds good using free tools that you can find online. So if you have like an iPad or a computer in front of the class, et cetera, um, you could learn about basic sound design and inspire kids into that. There's a lesson on artificial intelligence, which we're going to look at here in a second. Uh, a lesson on environmental racism uh, that dives into like how communities are designed, why they're designed that way, um, where does that come from? And there's a lesson on like the idea of a wicked problem, which is a problem that's like super multifaceted, that's very difficult to solve um, with a focus on social media use. Um, we utilized focus group discussions from both kids that we've spoken to and also teachers to try to determine like what do people actually want to talk about and it would make sense that, you know, a lot of young people want to talk about social media use um, because it's something that they're engaging with every single day. And as I said before, all of this leads into an impact guidebook that gives you the tools to develop these into projects. The idea would be at the end of the lessons. So we've run through a few of these lessons together. However, many make sense for your class. I could then propose the kids hey, let's develop a project out of one of these and everybody could go their own direction with it. So maybe I'm like really interested in this um, like accessibility um, point and maybe I want to do a project about like auditing a website. This one's all about like auditing a website using screen readers um, and maybe you redevelop your school's website because a lot of schools get in trouble for not being like accessible from a, from a disability standpoint. Um, and that's your project. And this impact guidebook walks through how you do that with a whole class from a kids that are all doing different things. Um, again, this could be something that you could do in an individual subject class. If you have an advisory period or a homeroom, it could be done in there. Um, or if you want to go the extra mile, if you could somehow team up with other teachers and just like do a cool interdisciplinary project, that would be absolutely sick. Um, and these are just pictures of the um, impact guidebook. And you can see like we have cool like little graphics and things to present to people. And um, I, best, I guess the best way to describe this would be we designed it for what Nick and I sometimes call internally like normies. <laughs> the people that would look at a conference like this and go like, oh, no, no, that seems like it's a little out there. It seems like you're really tackling some some heavy stuff. We designed this with a very like normal audience in mind, like typical middle school teachers that could be adapted to um, more interdisciplinary project based stuff. So with that said, here's an example of a lesson. I'm going to kind of fly through this thing because we want to spend the most of our time just looking at the resources. But just to give you a brief overview, and these are screenshots of it, so it might look like a, like the formatting is a little weird because I got converted on Figma, so ignore the formatting. Um, so all of the lessons are set up the exact same way. Uh, this is an example of uh, artificial intelligence, uh, like diving into, this is a standard set forth by holistic thing taken. You can see the formatting is a little off because of how it works. Um, all the lessons start off with the idea of purpose. Um, and I address Peter's thing there, the idea that there's no such thing as normal. I should probably say typical is like probably a better word. Um, so in terms of artificial intelligence, uh, they all start off with purpose. This lesson gets into uh, like the growth of artificial intelligence, what it means to work with an artificial intelligence um, and ways that we could use it. Um, it's meant as a starter activity. It, it does not hit everything involving AI. Um, this has an introduction section where it just talks about like, can AI be used to improve writing? What are the potential benefits and risks of artificial assess, uh, intelligence, et cetera? And then it dives into this, which is, okay, we just spoke, spoke a little bit about AI. Let's actually showcase what it looks like. And we have for teachers, the instructions on how to use something like ChatGPT. Like it's up on my screen now on the Zoom, you might have to tap back. Um, using ChatGPT to demonstrate what's possible here. Um, I was always kind of shocked in working with kids uh, I think that a lot of us dive into, um, you know, AI, uh, and a lot of kids might not actually have seen this before, even though it might be like really popular on social media. So an activity you can start off with is like creative writing. Can we use AI to help us write something creative as a story? Before I type something in here, uh, this prompt on the lesson, if we want to do it, says, uh, thinking about a story you want to tell, 
And then we're going to use the machine to write a story. The example is writing a convincing story about Simon, Simon the gorilla. Does anyone have a story for chat GPT? A really random story you could tell us. Write a story about how my Roomba keeps getting lost on the way home. Perfect. Write a story about Skylar's Roomba that keeps getting lost on the way back home. Done. Um, and as you probably know, if you've used ChatGPT before, we have a story here, right? Um, it's a cozy little house on Elm Street. And the inventor Skyler has been fascinated by robots. He got a state-of-the-art Roomba, Rudy, on his 12th birthday. But it wasn't an ordinary Roomba. It got upgraded. Uh, it has unparalleled efficiency. He was proud. He gave it a unique feature. It could go outside. But Rudy doesn't go too far. Um, on one particular stormy night, a particularly strong gust of wind knocked over the potted plant. And dirt and leaves blew over the virtual fence. Uh, that you set up and it looks like Skylar eventually finds this thing uh, and uh, gets into, I mean, it's a whole story you can see. And we can of course utilize this in order to like make it shorter. You know, we can say like, that's great. You know, make this 100 words, whatever. Um, and it will take it and make it a hundred words. And the purpose of this activity is really just to showcase to kids like what you can do with something like this tool, right? Um, and links, I'm going to actually get to that concept in just a second, um, because that's actually kind of part of the lesson in a sense. So this just demonstrates kind of like the prompt for AI. Um, you can allow kids, uh, there's instructions here on how to have kids do it. If you have access to it at your institution, um, the tools that we like on here are free or at least have free access. Otherwise, you know, you could just do it as a class. Um, and we have questions about like initial questions, at least about benefits, drawbacks, um, ethics, um, like how would you feel about a book that was written by AI? Just starting to dip our toes into ideas about what artificial intelligence is with the idea of we should be reactive about talking about concepts like this as opposed, or we should be proactive in talking about topics like this instead of being reactive. So instead of banning AI and just saying AI is terrible, which is going to get every single kid to go on open AI right away and start using it. Uh, instead, we should talk about it in school and actually start navigating this and starting to have those conversations. Um, at this point, it gets into like a, a section where kids are asking or, or answering whether or not uh, various series of writings are written by AI. Um, and we have this list of writings here. Again, I have it back up on the Zoom. Um, and this just gives them a bunch of like prompts. Um, and these are all written by AI, FYI. Uh, we would just like go through one by one. Like there's one that's like a fake study that didn't exist. Uh, there's a poem, there's a recipe for making some kind of salmon dish, a math equation, a haiku, uh, like all sorts of different kinds of things, um, with the goal asking kids whether or not it's written by AI or not. And of course they're all written by AI, but then kind of the twist to this is that the entire lesson itself is written by AI which is meant to kind of like blow kids' minds. We didn't actually write the lesson. We asked OpenAI to write the lesson about AI. So everything that's written on this lesson that's not in green is all chat GPT. And what's interesting about that is then we can get into a meta discussion about like whether or not that is ethical. Like, is it a legitimate practice? As in, is it valid for someone to create use resources using AI as opposed to making it an, uh, manually, is it ethical to rely on AI to create materials? Um, like obviously we're feeding it prompts, but like where is this data source from, where, when it comes from, et cetera. It's, it's, it, I mean, you could have five discussions about this in a row um, and it would be pretty darn interesting. Um, and then as a next step, uh, I should note, we also have a whole lesson about ethics and AI that's available on our website and that gets into like the, the kind of the, the more seedy parts of this, the more problematic parts um, for various reasons. So Can that's I like an example of, yeah, oh, go ahead. Sorry, Chris. 
Um, yeah. I was just going to add, it would be real cool then to to pair um, or to play off, you know, the AI generated samples that either uh, the lesson provides or that the kids are generating, have them narrow their story to 100 words and then um, have them type up on a Google Doc their own 100 word story. And then let's let's compare and contrast. Let's share those with each other and see who can guess, you know, what uh, which ones are AI generated, which ones are human generated, what gives, you know, uh, what what makes the human story? What how can we tell that there's humans at the center of this? How can we start to unpack a little bit of the traits that give away perhaps the the AI uh, templates or formulas that they're using? How do we unpack those biases that that Lynx was talking about there too? Um, and our own that we bring to the table in our writing. So there's just so much um, opportunity once you get into that space and start asking those questions for for you to be critical, to get kids um, critical, to problematize, you know, that that AI space. So I, I get excited um, thinking about the, the the possibilities for a lesson like that. Right. And I really want to emphasize because I'm sure many of you have thoughts on like, well, what if we did this with it? And that's kind of like the whole point. It's meant to be modular and extendable. This is your basis or something to riff off of to design something that you would actually use in the classroom, which is what at least I did with like every tool um, that came about, no matter um, where it came from. Um, so it meant that it's, it's meant to be extended upon and they're all available as Google documents. Uh, so this is a PDF, but they're Google docs. Um, every single lesson ends with a reflection question. This is normalized across the entire IDS. Again, you could use it, you could not use it, but our idea was instead of moving away from, instead of using like traditional grades, uh, we're trying to help teachers ease into the idea of maybe like a Likert scale. Um, how would you rate your understanding of the concept? You know, sad to happy. And I could just review this really quickly as a teacher and see whether or not they got the overall concept of the lesson. And again, there's a facilitator guide for all of these. With so the with idea said, of these reflections, yeah. sorry, real quick, the idea of these yeah. reflections being that across what 41 lessons, if you, you know, if you were going to use the full curriculum, do all the lessons, you know, take the time that it, that it needs to do that. Well, then if you have these 41 reflections from kids, they can start to gather an artifact and a reflection sheet, an artifact and reflection sheet, right? They're going to end your class, be it the, the semester or a year long, with, you know, a, a, a ton of artifacts that are going to represent their learning over the course of this interdisciplinary curriculum. Um, and so those reflection sheets and the activities inside are also kind of geared towards those um those more holistic assessment types as well. So it's meant to facilitate a portfolio um, led approach, a student led conferencing approach to assessment. Um, and especially as uh, we start talking, you know, with, with Aaron Shorna Unruler and stuff, how those tools can help facilitate it, right? It just helps teachers make the shift away from traditional grades and grading more towards uh, those student centered, um, you know, holistic um, versions of assessment and evaluation. Right. So I'm going to hop back over again to like the zoom to show you my, my other tabs here. Um, feel free to stay on the figment because all the, the stuff is on there, but just to showcase some of the links that you'll find within the first and Nick put this in the chat, um, is a link to the entire curriculum, uh, which you can feel free to play around with here. Um, as you go onto the website, you'll see kind of just an overview of what we just said. Um, again, this is sponsored and partner where we're grant funded by holistic think tank which is where this comes from and they've set out these standards which are i think a pretty good interpretation of like holistic standards everything from like looking at curiosity to self-care to trust and hope um and the link is completely cool to share it's it's on our website uh it's all available for free it's all creative commons um it's all there to uh be used and adapted um again it's all available for free um this website goes through um, it has links to the pedagogical guidebook, the facilitation guides, et cetera. It's all there. Um, but most importantly, at the very, very top, if you click on the second tab here where it says curriculum and get past our, our donate <laughs> uh, section, please donate, just help support the work. Uh, but if you get past that, in theory, oh, is it not loading? Oh, there it goes. Okay. So after that, this is these are all the lessons. So you can see here, there are 41 different lessons, each labeled with a facilitation doc and a student doc. Um, they all go to a uh, Google document at the top. You can narrow these down by uh, the standards that holistic think tank has laid out, but you kind of have to browse through them. But for example, here's one on city planning. If I dive into this facilitator guide, 
Um, this is a lesson where students learn and examine uh, three different cities across the world, Chicago, Tokyo, and Brasilia. Um, and there's colorblind accessible maps as well, but like if you were to click on one of these, it's literally just a, you know, it's a map. <laughs> it's a map of a city, right? Uh, and it dives into like what stands out about these designs, what do you notice, what do you wonder, that kind of thing. Um, and then eventually, after you get through everything, there's a print and play map where kids design their own city. Now, there's like ways you could riff off this. If you had like a computer lab, you could have kids use like SimCity or something or Pocket City on their phone. Like you could have them design cities, um, but it's there. Um, it, in terms of the flexibility, the, we actually designed this with the idea that, that teachers would just like tear this entire thing up. Um, as someone who is, uh, Nick and I are both very skeptical of scripted curriculums um, and their ability to meet the needs of the kids that are in the room. And we also want to treat teachers as artists. Um, this is met as a supplementary tool um, and a space where you can just kind of take things as needed and make something that makes sense to your community with that pedagogical guidebook in mind. So there's a foundation yes. of things that we're looking for, like universal design for learning, uh, like hands-on learning and project-based learning, et cetera. That's the foundation. Yes. And these are the tools to help get you there. We um, designed it for you all in mind, knowing that you're going to take the awesome ra radical idea and then totally, you know, just go bonkers with it. Um, so this is like just the, the start of that seed of the something cool that's going to launch into a place that you never thought that you would land. But, you know, you got there uh, based on iteration. I want to answer something somebody um, had direct messaged me about translation. Um, and that, I think, was more of a salient issue when these were just static fixed PDF documents, kind of like what you saw um, in the in the Figma. But with these being Google Doc based, the idea for us putting them on Google was that Google will then offer the tools for you to be able to access this and translate them into whatever language you know is necessary. Um, you know, Spanish, Japanese, Polish. When I was in uh, in Poland talking to teachers about this last month, you know, it was it was super easy for them and myself to show like, hey, here's how you can translate the doc obviously with caveats, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, then you can, you know, roll it out to your kids in whatever context without doing the work of going through and translating a PDF and, and, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, another, I guess, shout out to the fact that we try to use as much as we can web-based sources, because then you can use the browser translating tools on a lot of things to, uh, to also translate any source materials um, or videos. You know, YouTube is pretty good um, with, with offering, uh, right. you know, and some, I should add some too subtitles that in a lot of languages. Yeah. Holistic think tank is funding this. So like in terms of like that, that need for translation, um, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a desire or like a demand, I should say, um, in order to translate the resources that that might not be worked out. Um, I also did want to highlight from like the AI lesson, uh, examples of like non-discussion based extension activities. Um, like this one is like, how could you use artificial intelligence in a physical education class? And one idea that was fascinating to us was the idea of having kids generate workout routines using AI um, and discussing whether or not those workout routines are safe. And you could like you could spin off of that because more and more articles online are entirely written by AI. Um, and like there's going to be a certain point at which we cross that. I'm like blanking on like what that's called, but like the, the, the point at which we no longer can tell what's real or fake and it's no longer obvious to us um, and whether or not that's going to harm us um, because there are like a lot of ethical issues with AI and how it sources its resources. Um, right. But I answer, like, I like yeah, the, good. oh, sorry. I, I like the idea of generate the workout either try it or evaluate it first, see if it's something that like is, is usable. Same way with the recipe too, like have it generate a recipe. Like let's try to follow this recipe or whatever, because that that is like a low stakes entry into being critical of those things, right? Well, if it didn't get the recipe right, if it doesn't understand human physiology and how workouts work, can we trust the information about history or, you know, science or some of those other things? Um, and I'll, I'll address too here, Carla's question. This is, um, at least one of the approaches that Holistic Think Tank had um, funded and had talked about 
in their session on Monday, I believe now. It seems like so long ago, but um, we were one of the the grand uh, grantees in that round one, um, and there were a couple of other grantees as well. And and our program has made it through to phase two, which is what Chris has pulled up here, where now we can start to get you all involved in the pilot program to not only implement this, but start to um, contribute your own um, resources and lessons and the awesome thing, frankly, the awesome things that you are already doing. Um, we can just kind of put it into a uh, a template and a holistic bow and, you know, hopefully then get you compensated for it. So hopefully that answers some of those questions, but keep asking them as Chris, um, right. ask him in the chat as Chris goes through the intake. highlight two things. First, just self promo for a second this is separate of the ids but we do have a resource pa resource page that's also free for teachers it looks kind of similar and we have a whole lesson on ai stereotypes and critical reflections and like all that kind of stuff so there's a whole separate lesson on that that's available fyi um but and i'll i'll link that here in the chat this also exists um but to dive back into the ids um again as nick was just saying this is still like super early this is a draft of the curriculum it is not done i'm going to imagine there's probably mistakes in there, like like spelling mistakes and formatting mistakes, that kind of stuff, um, as it's still being solidified. And what Holistic Think Tank is looking for right now, uh, alongside us, are teachers to help submit lessons, as well as pilot some of this content within their courses. There are a few requirements, um, and this is open to anyone, not just people at this conference. So if you know anyone that like might be interested in this, please send this to them, the more the merrier. Um, the three requirements are they have to teach students that are age levels 10 to 15 years old. Obviously, there's like flexibility there. If it's like 10 and 16 year old or uh, 15 and 16 year olds, we can make that work 9, 10, et cetera. Um, with the idea being that like we couldn't do grade level per se because it's a world scope curriculum. So if you, you know, it depends on where you're at. Um, you have to be able to meet once per month uh, with us and we'll, we'll figure out a way to make that work so that like, the time zones work. We wouldn't do it during work hours. Um, that's virtual. Um, and the big piece is they're looking to develop 10 IDS lessons. Um, and what that's defined by are kind of these three bullets. An IDS lesson is an interdisciplinary lesson that is 60 to 90 minutes, roughly, has like activities, readings, discussions, the more hands on, the better. Uh, it has to use web or print based materials that you've created or like creatively common license. So like you can't, um, like just like take another lesson that exists online. We just try to use like copyright free images, that kind of stuff. Um, and then finally, it has to be interdisciplinary in scope. You can put your own subject angle twist on it, um, but it could be adaptable to other content areas. So for example, we have a lesson called the roots of mathematics, uh, which is all about the history of math. It talks about math based concepts, but it's also really a social studies and humanities lesson. Um, and there's a spinoff for science in there. Um, same thing with like world religions, it's, it could be applicable to any um, content area. These can be made from scratch or you can just adapt it from stuff you've already have. Um, you basically, when you submit these lessons, they're released underneath the Creative Commons uh, for free underneath Holistic Think Tank. So it's not like you are you can't use your own work anymore. Uh, it just gets transferred over with a Creative Commons license to Holistic Think Tank and it's released for free. Um, you can use license software. That's perfectly fine. Um, if, if you're the one using it, um, we, we try to keep it. If, if it's aimed at kids, we try to keep the materials free, if that makes sense. So like if you want to make a guide, you could use like photo P if you wanted kids to be using a, like a electronic software instead of Photoshop. I think that's what I, I, Monique, let me know if that's what you're asking. Um, finally, it is paid. I probably should have opened with that, uh, but you do get paid for this. Um, amount kind of TBD. Um, I believe the range that we were told by Holistic is between $1,000 and $2,000 um, for participating in the cohort. This is over the course of the 2023-2024 school year. Um, so kind of that will that will come out. Yeah, if students are using software, I would stick to uh, like freely available software to keep it as accessible as possible. But I think for those ones that you're listing, we could probably find a free alternative to one. And if that's something that you're looking into, I'm, I'm more than happy to help with that because that's that's what I did. That's that's digital design. That's my my background too. So real quick, the the idea with us presenting this to you all is thinking, okay, you're all educators who are thinking in these expansive interdisciplinary ways already, and you're doing project based work. Um, so why not 
get you involved in this pilot where you can be compensated um, for for those efforts, just for um, you know attending some meetings, getting to hang out with us and and kind of the the, the phase two cohort, and then we'll work together on transforming those into the template that I had talked about there. They they haven't quite nailed down what that template will look like. Um, it's it's a pretty easy process. If you've seen a lesson template in your life, you kind of know what that that looks like. So there's a holistic one that we would use to to do that. And then yeah, the cool part too is then um, you get to kind of propagate your own influence outward as the program grows and as the the resources grow, you know, uh, uh, if we have 10 teachers contributing 10 lessons, that adds 100 lessons to our 41 and right then the program um gets right. even more awesome uh that, shareable, yeah. etc. And the final thing to say on that and then we'll just take questions for the last like 5 minutes or so is yeah. this is just one third of the kind of like basis of lessons. So HRP pre-populated in the pilot, a series of questions for an example. Um, the University of Sheffield, which is out in London, um, they are, I should say the UK, uh, also has their own population of lessons. And there also is the Fab Foundation um, who has their own foundation of lessons. There's all these different lessons that are coming together, all themed around this idea of interdisciplinary learning with this massive repository of work similar to like a Zen Ed project or learning for justice or like your various different uh, spots to find like fairly high quality uh, creative commons ask resources. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, please ask in the chat. We got about five minutes here. Uh, let, yeah. let us know if we didn't address anything early on. Yeah, or feel free to unmute and just ask too. I mean, we're all we're all friends here too. But yes, to, to address Carla and a couple other people have asked, share that form. Um, it, it's linked on there. We'll send it out with the conference materials at the end of the week too, just to be like, hey, this pilot that we were talking about, um, share this, sign up, uh, and we'll go from there. Uh, yeah. And to reiterate, the draft is on our website and you can share that. It's publicly accessible. Use it. Let us know how it goes and if we should fix anything, because uh, it has not been piloted. Uh, it is all complete, like brainstormed. Yeah, Mason, go ahead. Yeah, Mason. So since I'm just at the beginning of my teaching career, I don't quite feel confident enough in my lesson planning abilities to like make a lesson plan that other people might be using like around the whole world. But is there like a separate way to like, if we do want to use one of these HRP lesson plans, there a separate place to give feedback on like how that went things to improve about one of these lessons to this, this group specifically? That's a great question. There yeah. will be, but it's just not available yet. Okay. Uh, we're waiting to meet with holistic think tank to like, let us know what that process looks like. Um, we're, to be honest, we're not sure whether or not that feedback goes to us or if it goes to holistic think tank and then they change it. So we're trying to figure that out, but yes, the answer is yes. Um, Florence, oh, Florence asks, uh, the 10 lessons are due at application time or throughout the year. They're developed throughout the year. Um, the, the deadline, and I'll need to double check. Um, we'll let you know the deadline for the 10 lessons is at some point during the winter of this year. And then there's an opportunity to test some of those lessons in the spring of next year um, is like the, the timetable for this. Um, this is all fairly flexible um, as many things are. Uh, you're working with folks that is the holistic thing take at human restoration project. So like we're pretty like malleable about that, that if for some reason it was like, hey, I can't get two more lessons until February or whatever, fine. Like we'll, we'll figure out a way to make it work. Um, with you. This is a small cohort. We're looking at like 10 people that would be joining yeah. us. Uh, Monique, go ahead. I just want to reiterate because I want to make sure that I understand. Sure. So for step one, you sign up to contribute to the thing. Then yes. from there, you go through all of the lessons to see if there's anything that vibe with you or you create your own. At what you, point does AI yeah. come in? Because I'm totally, yeah. I came in half an hour late, so I'm sorry. So I'm no, you're good. You're good. So on our website, if you go to, let me scroll up here. If mm -hmm. you go to the front page of this IDS website um, and then scroll down just a little bit to where it says competencies, mm -hmm. uh, these are the like quote unquote standards. If you click where it says read more, there's a lot more information about these standards. Yeah. But the idea would be that you look through either existing lessons 
that you already have, like that you've made over the years and or maybe one of these sparks an idea that you have to create a lesson and then you convert it to the template that Holistic Think Tank provides to make it interdisciplinary. And that's, and that's it. it. Okay. I was way complicating it. Okay. No, no, no. Yeah. It, it's the, the AI thing was just our example. There, the, the, the topics, concepts, themes come from all across everything. Yeah, we were just, just doing the like, AI one. So you can showcase what, what's there. And also so yep. you could use that stuff too. I should add yeah. that in, another way of saying this is that if you have, as I'm sure many of you do, like a hundred plus lessons in your back pocket and some of them are really good and you share them online, well, now you could share them underneath the Creative Commons license and then get paid for them. So that's that's another way of saying it. Yeah, and and it's, I mean, you probably just have, if you were like me, I, I never, yeah, never made a lesson plan. So if you have like just the cool things that you do and want to, you know, put them into a structure to make them useful for other people, that was always the part that I struggled with was the, let me explain to you the 10 part process that this this goes through then uh then yeah that might help you know even just spread the word amongst your own colleagues and uh and again share spread the influence amongst uh, other people too um yes and carla when this court recording is available absolutely send it it'll be on youtube so the entirety of the internet will be able to have access to this mm -hmm. so um yes the common and, things are the anchor yes and those those are just the 10 things that um, Hannah, the, that holistic think tank developed there. Chris is pulling them up there. Yeah. Agency right. adaptability. Can you go to the, you just can, the big image, Chris? Yeah. We'll, so uh, you can see like, these are the like headers that we have listed on that yes. website. And then if you go to that link, uh, sorry, if you go to that link that's on here where it says read more, that takes you to the HTT website where you can see there's like sub subtopics. And, and here's and, the deal, right? Yeah. When all, all of you awesome people who are already doing progressive things, you can connect any of your lessons back to adaptability, curiosity, concern for nature, self-care, all of those, or tweak it a little bit to slightly align with one category over the other. Mm -hmm. So pretty much Chris and I's approach to designing our curriculum is like, let's, let's kind of have this list in the back of our mind. What kinds of cool things do we want to do with kids in this curriculum? And then we'll work backwards to kind of make them fit. So, yeah. so yes, that, that's the loose La anchor, yeah. but we'll very last back. thing I'll say about the standards, then we'll wrap up, which is like, yep. they're very broad. If, if you've been like very much involved in like the PLC world of like aligning things to standard 1.1, don't think of it that way. Like it just needs to have the vibe of proactive action for the future and it meets that standard that's why the lessons are so like all over the place like we have lessons on everything from uh again designing cities to making uh, and mastering music like it's really all over the place and that's intentional like we want to be very broad to appeal to a variety of different interests yes um all right. all right well my goodness yeah. thank you all so much for for joining us here and again if you have uh, if you want to get involved, we'll send everything out. You can share the video. You can share the resources. Um, my gosh, thanks for spending time. Be sure to take a break, take a walk, uh, go use the restroom, let the dogs out, whatever you got to do. And then join us um, here at the top of the hour for Cortico um, and Local Voices Network as they talk about the work that they'll do too. So awesome. Thank you all. Thanks, everybody. Catch you soon. Take care. See we'll you see soon. You.